exalt you right now where we are, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you this morning, God. Spirit of the living God, we ask you to fall afresh upon us today. For God, without you, we are nothing and we can do nothing. Lord, in you we live and move and we have our being. So we ask you, God, to break us. Break every pride. Break arrogance, God. Mold us this morning, God. Shape us into who you want us to be. And we ask you today, God, Fall afresh upon us, Lord, individually, our homes, our families, our nation this morning, God. Fall afresh on us, Jesus. We say yes to you, God. We say yes to your will and your way, O oh God. For, Lord, your word says that if my people who are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways that Lord you would hear from heaven you would forgive our sin and you would heal our land and today God our land needs healing God today we need healing Lord there are so many God in the hospital Lord around the world who need healing and God, there is still a bomb in Gilead. There is still healing for the soul. And so we thank you, Jesus. God, that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And Lord, with your stripes, we are healed. We thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary. We are grateful, Lord God, that that blood still flows, God. It reaches to the highest mountain. And Lord, it flows to the lowest valley. Your blood is good for us. We're so grateful. We're so thankful today, God. Hallelujah. Yeah. For sending your son for us. We give you thanks, Lord. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Poor say I am a rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am a rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. For
give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son oh give thanks with a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am a rich because of what the Lord has done for us the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. I am strong. Let the poor say I, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give Oh, for all he's done, we give thanks, yes, we give thanks, we give thanks, Lord, for all, all you've done, we give thanks. Come on, right where you are, just lift your hands and give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Oh, for all, all God has done, we give thanks. Oh, give thanks. For all that he has done, we give thanks. Hallelujah. Yes, God, we give you thanks. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for being our light and our salvation for being our help in troublesome times. Whom shall we fear this morning? For you are the strength of our lives, and we give you glory today. Hallelujah.
走呼，红山来披。The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light. He will 
So whom, whom shall I fear? Oh, tell me who. Oh, tell me who, whom shall I be? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wherever you are right now, if you're home and you're in a place of safety, I want you just to lift your hands and magnify the name of Jesus. The Lord is our refuge. He's our strength. He's a very present help in a time of trouble. We thank God for his Holy Spirit. We thank God for his son, Jesus Christ. For this reason we live. For this reason we have our being. It's not by my good works that I stand here. It's not by any strength of my own, but it's by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God that woke us up this morning the Spirit of God that clothed us in our right mind. It is to Him we glory. It is to Him we magnify. It is to Him we exalt. We thank God. We thank God for all that He is doing, all that He has done, and all that He will continue to do in our lives. And somebody say amen. We thank you, Jesus. I want to thank everyone who is tuning in, who is listening to this sermon. I want to thank you for taking the time out to click on our page and to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. Whether in song or by word. We are not here to entertain anyone. We are here as ambassadors for God to minister in the capacity in which God has called us. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Matthew, the seventh chapter, reading from verse 21 to 29. Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 21 to 29. It's amazing that on this high day we are not able to gather into a sanctuary and be together as a family of believers. But we have to be in our homes during this season. But even though we're home we know that God is where we are because we are the church and wherever the church is God is when we praise God the Bible lets us know that God inhabits the praises of his people Amen Matthew chapter 7 reading from verse 21 to 29 it reads as thus not everyone who says to me Lord Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father in heaven many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name and then i will declare to them i never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, 
I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended and the flood came and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them. The Bible said will be likened to a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it fell and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. I would like to focus, amen, my attention this morning on verse 24, 25, 26. Therefore, whoever hears these things of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these things of mine and does not do them, yes, will be likened to a foolish man who built his house on the side. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell and great was its fall. My subject to you this morning is, are you built to last? Are you built to last? Father, we thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, for your presence that we feel in this place. Lord, Father, we thank you, God, for allowing those to tune in. And we pray that you anoint their ears, that they may hear what thus saith the Lord. Anoint my lips, that I may speak as a servant of the Lord. For God, we know, is not by might nor by power, but it's by your divine spirit. I pray that you have your way. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And wherever you are, just say amen. Amen. Are you built to last? As we celebrate Resurrection Sunday during Passover, yes, we are reflecting on the redemptive work of God through his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Passover for many is a secret time of the year. It's when the Israelites remember and celebrate their deliverance from Egyptian slavery by the hand of God. They commemorate how God did it by sending ten plagues into Egypt and the last being the death angel. You must understand that the grip that the Egyptians had on Israel, the Bible lets us know, was so tight that God had to get involved. It was so tight that God had to send ten plagues into Egypt to pry the hands of the Egyptians off his people. In other words, each plague, yes, was assigned to lifting a finger of Egyptian oppression in order to loosen the grip of slavery on his people. They were oppressed beyond measure. They were oppressed to the point that they, they could not move. They, they were limited on where they could go. They were limited on worshiping God. They, they couldn't go into the wilderness to worship God. In fact, when God sent Moses to Pharaoh, he said, amen, let my people go into the wilderness for three days that they may worship me and exalt me. 
And Pharaoh told Moses, no. And so God wanted his people to worship him. Because even though they were in Egypt, they could not worship him the way he designed for them to worship him. Uh, there is a difference when you're in the presence of the Lord. There is, amen, a difference that comes upon us when we get into a place uh, and we are free from oppression. We are free, amen, from all of the problems of the world. And we are in the presence of the Lord magnifying and exalt his name amen he wanted them not to be distracted with their worship he wanted them to go into a secret place a hidden place in the wilderness where they can just focus on praising him even though they were oppressed even though amen they were under severe oppression God wanted them to go out of Egypt just to worship him and to focus on him to get refreshed so that they can keep on going, amen, in spite of what they were going through. It's important that you know that in spite of all of what God did, the children of Israel had to do their part in order to experience freedom. God. First, each family had to kill a lamb and apply the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of their home. Why? Because God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The second thing they had to do was stay within the confinement of their homes. They could not leave their homes for any reason at all. They couldn't go for a stroll in a park because they were having cabin fever. They couldn't go, amen, grocery shopping, amen, even though they ran out of groceries. They couldn't go because Goshen was on lockdown. It was on lockdown because, uh, oh God, the death angel was passing through the land. God said that even though the blood is applied on the doorpost, you got to stay where the blood is. You can't come from under the blood and to expect safety if you leave the confinement of your home. It is important as believers uh, that we understand the power of the blood. Uh, it's important that we recognize the saving grace of our Lord. Uh, anytime we come from under his protection, anytime we come from under his covering, uh, we put ourselves at risk. Uh, we put ourselves in a place to be destroyed by the death angel. Lord God, he said, stay within the confinement of the house of where the blood is applied. The blood of the lamb was critical in that it identified who they were, uh, God, as the death angel was passing by. Now, God, because now, of the blood applied, now, the Bible lets us know none of their sons died. Now, uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there is power in the blood. Yes, uh, don't you forget it. There is power in the blood. Now, I know uh, God many times people don't talk about the power of the blood. Now, uh, God churches today don't talk about the power of the blood. Uh, we talk about prosperity. We talk about uh, uh, God feel good sermons, but none of us much more talk about the power of the blood. It's important uh, that we go back to basics. Uh, it's important that we recognize uh, that there is power in the name of Jesus. Uh, it's important that even in this season, uh, Lord God, as we are going through a, a pandemic in our nation, uh, that we recognize the power of the blood uh, in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, uh, oh God, as believers, we celebrate this holy day uh, in connection with Passover. Uh, this is when we reflect on the redemption work of God uh, through Jesus Christ, the only begotten of the Father. Uh, it was through Jesus dying on the cross uh, for our sins we now have uh, access to God. Uh, prior to uh, Jesus dying for you and I, uh, we were bound by sin. We were bound by sin. Amen. 
we were slaves to sin uh, which means we had no power uh, of our own to free ourselves uh, from sin's grip. Uh, the Bible says that righteousness exalts a nation uh, but sin is a reproach to any people. Uh, I want to tell somebody here uh, that when we live righteous it brings us close to God uh, but when we live in sin it brings us mm, away from God. Uh, it pulls us apart. Uh, it brings separation. It brings uh, a man separation. Uh, uh, God, the Bible lets us know all have sinned uh, and have come short of the glory of God. Uh, uh, God, don't walk around thinking that you are sinless. Uh, the Bible said we all have sinned uh, and have come short of the glory of God. Uh, Lord God, sin separates us from God. It keeps us from becoming everything that God uh, intends for us to be. Uh, God, by Jesus dying on Calvary, uh, we are no longer slave to sin. Uh, Lord God, no hallelujah. Uh, we are no longer slave to sin. Now we have power uh, through the resurrection of our Lord. Uh, we have power because of his blood uh, that was shed on Calvary. We have power uh, to say no to sin tendencies. We have power to not having to give into our fleshly desires we have power everyone say we have power Yes, we have power. Lord God, I don't care who you are. You have the power. Huh? You don't have to give in to every sexual desires. Huh? You don't have to give in, amen, to anger. You don't have to give in, oh God, to any type of sinful, amen, proclivities that is running through your bodies. You don't have to give in to it huh? because you have power. Everyone say, I have power. Yes, I have power. Lord God, the Bible tells us uh, that Jesus had to go through so much uh, and that you and I might have a life and have it more abundantly. Uh, I want you to know, uh, Lord God, when you look at Jesus and his transition... Lord God, from the judgment hall to Calvary. I want you to understand, people of God, it wasn't an easy task. I will be honest with you. Lord God, I don't know if I would have made it. Lord God, if that was on my shoulder. Because when you think about all that he had done, when you think about all that he had to go through, Lord God, for nothing that he done wrong, Lord Jesus, uh, Lord God, he carried the weight of the world on his shoulder. Uh, he carried the weight of sin, uh, the sin that he did not commit, uh, but your sin, my sin, uh, and future generations to come. Uh, he carried all of our sins, uh, and he went to Calvary with it. Uh, he went while they beat him. Uh, they went while they whipped him. Uh, he went while, God, they spat on him. Uh, they God, he went while they pluck his beard and crowned him, uh, Lord God, with thorns on his head. Uh, God, he went, Lord God, while they humiliated him uh, in the public. Uh, Lord God, I don't know uh, if I would have been able to make it uh, like Jesus made it. Uh, but when I remind God, hallelujah, uh, but I'm reminded that when I look at Jesus, uh, oh God, prior to him getting to Calvary, he had to first uh, go through Gethsemane. Uh, I want to tell somebody today uh, that before you can get to Calvary, uh, you first have to go through Gethsemane. Uh, don't pass past, don't go past uh, the place of prayer, uh, thinking that you can handle the storms of life. Uh, don't go past the place of intercession. Uh, Lord God, where you think that you can go past this place uh, and handle the storms of life. No, uh, you'll be sadly mistaken. Oh Jesus, uh, you cannot get to Calvary uh, without first dealing with your Gethsemane. Uh, your Gethsemane prepares you uh, for your Calvary. Uh, your Gethsemane experience uh, brings you close to God. Uh, Lord God, Jesus, where you're wrestling with your destiny uh, and you're wrestling with your calling. Uh, you must understand that it's in this place uh, that God, the Bible said, agonize over his destiny. Mm. The Bible said, uh, Lord God, he was in such great agony uh, that his sweat became uh, like great drops of blood. Uh, you must understand uh, that the flesh, oh God, the Bible said the spirit was willing, uh, but the flesh was weak. Uh, we all of us, all of us who are hearing me right now, uh, we all are willing. Uh, but the question is, uh, can you really go through it? 
Lord Jesus, uh, when testing times come, uh, we say we could, uh, but when the rubber meets the road, it's another thing. Uh, so you got to have a Gethsemane experience uh, before you can have a Calvary moment. Uh, don't try to go to Calvary uh, without first handling your Gethsemane. It's important uh, that we draw close to God in this hour. Uh, it's important that while pandemic is running crazy all around the world, all around our nation, uh, it's important that we draw close to God uh, in this hour. Lord, uh, we can't go after anybody uh, but Jesus. Uh, we can't seek anybody's uh, guidance but the Lord. Uh, I don't care about CDC. Uh, I don't care about what the government is saying. Uh, I want to know what the Lord is saying. Uh, I want to know where he wants me to go and hide uh, in the secret place of the Most High. Uh, I want to know what God is saying in this hour to his people. There are a lot of people talking, huh? but I want to know what God is saying. Huh? Oh God, there are a lot of people giving their opinions, huh? but I want to know what God is saying. Huh? Lord God, lead me huh? and I will follow. Lord, huh? And so when I look at this, uh, Jesus said, uh, not my will, uh, but thy will be done. Uh, and so I understand uh, that in order for me to be able to, to last in the times of trials, uh, I must understand uh, that it can't be about my will, uh, because my will will bring me, uh, Lord God, away or, or will take me away from the will of God. Uh, because if it was up to his will, uh, his will would have said no huh? you don't have to go to Calvary huh, to save the people huh? you can do it another way huh? but he said not my will Lord huh? he said thy will be done and some of us uh, are trying to run away from the will of God on our lives. Uh, some of us don't want to go through certain things uh, because, uh, Lord God, we don't want to deal uh, with the hassle, uh, Lord God, of trials and tribulation. Uh, can I ask you the question to this morning? Uh, what if we are the end time church? Uh, what if we are the church of the tribulation period? Uh, I want to ask you the question this morning. Uh, are you built to last? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I know you can have church uh, and we do a lot of church uh, Lord God where we're dancing and shouting huh? but I want to let you know huh, that there is a time coming huh, where your dance can't bring you through it. Huh? You got to be on your knees praying. Huh? Dancing oh Lord God huh, is not the answer huh, to a world crisis. Now we've got to learn to pray first huh, and get an answer from God huh, and then we can dance. Huh? Lord Father hallelujah. Huh? It's time for for us to seek his face, uh, humble ourselves, uh, Lord God, and get a word from the Lord. And we can only get a word from the Lord uh, when we position ourselves to seek the Lord uh, in times of crisis. Uh, oh God, not your neighbor and neighbor, uh, are you seeking him uh, or are you dancing? Uh, Lord God, God is looking for those uh, who will seek him. Uh, he's looking for those who will go after him. Uh, he's looking for those who want a word from him. Uh, Lord God, hallelujah, uh, I want to seek him in times of crisis. Uh, the scripture that we have read uh, finds Jesus speaking to a multitude of people uh, and sharing with them the importance uh, of not just being a hearer only, uh, but also a doer of the word. Uh, he shares with the multitude that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, uh, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, uh, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Uh, now, if you're like me, uh, when I read this scripture, uh, I had to draw closer because uh, God was saying something uh, that was very deep. Uh, he lets us know that everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, uh, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven, it is possible that we can only hear his word. It is possible that we are only hearing his word and not doing his word. The Bible said many, Lord God will say to me, Lord, Lord God, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name 
and then uh, I will declare to them I never knew you uh, depart from me you who practice lawlessness uh, and so the key here that you have to understand uh, was that they were ministering uh, yes they were some were prophesying uh, someone uh, God was casting out demons uh, uh, God some did many wonders in his name uh, but in spite of all they did uh, the Bible lets us know uh, then God said, uh, I don't know you. God, huh? I don't want to preach. Huh? And when it ends, and, and, and God, huh? I don't want to preach. Huh? Lord God, Jesus, huh? and end up, huh? Lord God, realizing that Lord, huh? the Lord does not know me. Huh? I don't want to sing huh? and sing songs on the choir, huh? sing songs and be an artist, huh? singing gospel songs. Huh? And it ends up when my life is over, huh? the Lord said, I don't know you. Huh? I don't want to just prophesy. Huh? Lord God, and I'm prophesying to people huh? and seeing people's life change but God says to me huh? I don't know you huh? I don't want to do wondrous works huh? I've got to do miracles and see people heal huh? but when it's all said and done huh? the Lord said I don't know you he said depart from me now he workers of iniquity those who practice lawlessness uh, so what he was saying uh, was that uh, you were doing what you were doing uh, but you were not doing the will of my father uh, you were doing it uh, Lord God but your life wasn't right uh, Lord God it's time for the church uh, to get back in order uh, it's time for us to be potent and powerful uh, it's time for every preacher uh, Lord God Jesus uh, to get right uh, it's time for every gospel artist, now, anointed singers of God to get right. Now, the world needs us. The world is in the midst of a crisis. Uh, and it's time for us to realign ourselves back to God now, so that we can be effective in this hour. Uh, and somebody say amen. Lord Jesus, uh, oh God, is not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, uh, shall enter into heaven. Uh, and so it's not about what I say, uh, Lord God, it's more about what I do. Uh, if I'm doing the will of the Father, uh, or you might be saying, Pastor, these guys were doing something. Uh, and they were prophesying. They were casting out demons. They were, Lord God, Jesus, doing many wonderful or wonders in the kingdom. Uh, but the Lord told them uh, I don't know you uh, yes they were practicing in their gift and in their calling uh, but they were not living right uh, and anytime we don't live right the Bible says again that sin uh, is a reproach to any man uh, and so when we have sin in our life uh, it disapproves us from God uh, when we have sin in our life uh, Lord God it cancels us out of our uh, God our reward in heaven uh, when we have sin in our life uh, it separates us uh, from the presence of God uh, and that's why we have to do the will of the Father uh, not my will but thy will be done uh, therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine uh, and does them he said I will liken him to a wise man uh, who built his house on the rock watch this now the Bible said and the rain descended now, the flood came uh, and the winds blew and beat on the house now, notice here that uh, this man uh, or believer uh, was not exempt from the rain descending. Uh, he was not exempt from the floods coming. Uh, he was not exempt from the winds blowing and beating on his house. Uh, no, he was not exempt. Uh, but what remained uh, was the fact that his house uh, did not fall. Uh, I want to let you know right now uh, that there are some things that God will not exempt you from. Uh, Lord God and just because he does not exempt you from it huh, doesn't mean you're not anointed mm. hallelujah huh? Lord God some of God's anointed people huh, had to go through the worst of storms huh? oh you better believe it honey huh? Lord God some of God's anointed people huh, had to go through some times of testing huh? and so we find here in scripture 
that, uh, oh God, that uh, the wise man uh, who built this house on the rock uh, was one who heard the word of God uh, and also did uh, what the word said to do. Uh, are you catching this? Uh, oh God, hallelujah. Uh, and so the floods, uh, so the rain descended, uh, the floods came uh, and the winds blew uh, and beat on that house. Uh, we are living in a time uh, where the rain is descending the flood is coming huh, and the wind is blowing huh, and is beating on our house. Huh. Lord God Jesus, huh, the Bible says the body huh, is the temple of the Lord. Huh. Lord God, it is beating on our house. Huh. And so we are in uh, the midst of a crisis. Huh. Oh God, and I want, and I want to know, are huh, oh, you built to last? on huh? because you have to be built to last uh, in order for you to make it now huh? oh god as i said before huh? if you are if we are the end time church now huh? lord god the bible said that oh god that there's going to be a great uh a great tribulation period huh? lord god there's going to be such uh god great deaths in the land huh? oh god believers are going to be uh oh god beheaded now huh? they're going to go through such great agony huh? and i want to know if we are that end time church now can you make it to the end huh? can you survive the storm of life watch this oh god but he said but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be likened like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell, and great was its fall. Watch this. Now, notice the same thing uh, happened to both people. Huh? One was considered wise because he heard and he did. Now, the other one was considered foolish uh, because he heard uh, and he chose uh, to disobey. Huh? Lord God Jesus. Now, and the Bible said he is likened unto a man, huh? a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Huh? He built this house on shifting sand. Uh, things that have no stability. Uh, things that uh, shift and move. Uh, oh God, it's not grounded in anything. Uh, the Bible said he's likened to a foolish man uh, who built his house on the sand. Uh, watch this. He said the floods excuse me, the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its form. Lord God, it didn't matter how much degree you have. It doesn't matter how much money you have. I remember in uh, God, in 2001, 9-11, Lord God, there were rich people that were jumping out of windows. There were rich people who were committing suicide. There were people, Lord God, who was going through so much uh, and that they rather, Lord God, died than to endure the pain of life. Lord Jesus, uh, they couldn't stand because uh, they didn't prepare for the storm. Huh? Lord God Jesus, uh, there are people even now that are committing suicide uh, because uh, of social distancing. Huh? They can't handle being away from people. Huh? Read it, it's happening. People are committing suicide because uh, of social distancing. Huh? Lord God, uh, uh, God, we got to pray in this very hour huh? because uh, we haven't prepared ourselves to handle uh, what's coming. Don't have mercy. And so the Bible said, Lord God, the Bible said uh, that this man built his house, right? Uh, and the rain descended. Uh, the rain descended, uh, the floods came, uh, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it fell, and great was its fall. In order for us uh, to make it, in order for us uh, to survive, we got to understand, uh, we got to make sure we have coverage. Uh, we got to make sure uh, that, amen, uh, that we have coverage on our life. Uh, yeah, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you have insurance? Uh, uh, God, I'm not talking about nationwide insurance. Uh, I'm not talking about, uh, Lord God, hallelujah, insurance. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, all state insurance. Uh, I'm talking about 
about do you have uh, spiritual insurance uh, it's amazing to me uh, to see the amount of things that we insure on earth mm -mm. We insure our house. We insure our car. Lord God, we insure even our pets. We insure any valuable things we have. We have life insurance, car insurance, renters insurance. But my question to you today, after you have made all the position of God, all, Lord God, of God, the positioning for your fleshly body, Lord God, have you made provision for your soul? God, huh? have you made a provision for your soul? Huh? You provision for your earthly body, but have you provision uh, for your soul? Huh? Lord God, hallelujah. Huh? Your soul is the most important thing uh, in this hour. Huh? It's not your natural body, huh? but it's the spirit man. Huh? You're crazy huh? to have uh, insurance on everything uh, but your spirit. Huh? Oh God, you're walking like a crazy man, huh? a crazy woman. Huh? If you're living your life uh, and you don't have a spiritual insurance uh, to know that when this life is over, uh, Lord God, where will you spend eternity? Uh, I don't want to make sure. I'm not trying to figure it out. Uh, I want to know that when my life is over, uh, I know where I'm going. Mm. Lord Jesus, huh? oh God, I'll know where I'm going. Huh? I'm going to be with the Lord huh? because I have spiritual insurance. Huh? Lord God, I believe huh, that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Huh? In this hour, we got to have spiritual insurance. Huh? We got to make sure we're covered from head to toe. Huh? Lord God, hallelujah. Huh? We have life insurance for our natural body huh? because we value the natural body. Huh? But I want to tell somebody this morning huh, on on Resurrection Sunday. Huh? Make sure you value your spirit huh? because your spirit, huh? Lord God, is the one that will spend eternity huh? either in heaven or in hell. Uh, it's quiet now, huh? Lord God, Jesus. Huh? We rather just shout over everything, huh? But there are messages that God gives us huh? that is not for shouting, huh? It's for us to come to a place uh, of understanding, huh? Un God, to, for us to come to a place of reconciliation. Huh? And somebody say, Amen. Amen. Uh, and so we find here in Scripture, uh, in closing, uh, that those who were able, uh, uh, God, to hear and to do the will uh, of the Father, uh, they were the one uh, that was able to survive, uh, oh God, when the storm came. Uh, and my question to you again is, are you built to last? Uh, oh God, I'm not talking about your religious background, your denominational background, no. Uh, Lord God, uh, I want to know, are you built to last? Uh, oh God, uh, that when the storms of life come, uh, can you handle it? Can you stand uh, in the midst of it? Uh, can you still lift your hands in the sanctuary, uh, in your home, and bless the Lord, the Lord that made the heavens and the earth, uh, the Lord that says, uh, oh God, let there be, and there it was. Uh, or oh can we still magnify his name uh, with all of what we're seeing going on around us? Uh, oh God, are we built to last? Uh, that's the question that you have to ask yourself uh, am I prepared uh, that if it should be life or death uh, Lord God if things should get worse in this land uh, can I endure uh, can I stay faithful to God's word uh, in the name of Jesus uh, somebody say I need uh, to make sure I'm built to last We can't second guess this. Now, we got to make sure that we are built to last. Now, wherever you are right now, I want you to stand. Uh, and I want you to lift your hands. Uh, and I want you just to magnify the name of God. Uh, I want you to begin to worship him. And uh, God, seek his face even now. Uh, I don't know what you're going through. Uh, I don't know what's on your mind even now. Uh, but I want you to come into the presence of the Lord. Now, I want you to create an atmosphere where you are. Where you and God can come together at a meeting place uh, and you can have a little talk with Jesus uh, and tell him all about your troubles and he will hear your faintest 
faintest cry and he will answer by and by. Come on somebody, worship him. Worship him in this season. Worship him, oh God, in your pain. Worship him in your struggle. No matter what you're going through right now, lift your hands. You may have a loved one, Lord God, who is in the hospital. You may have a loved one who has the coronavirus. But I want you to understand what matters most is are you built to last, Lord God? I don't care, Lord God, hallelujah, I don't care what's happening in this world, what matters most is, are you built to last, Lord God, when this thing passes by, there's going to be something else that's going to come, and the question is, are we built to last, are we built to last, Oh God, uh, have a little talk with Jesus. Uh, make sure whatever you have done, uh, make sure your transgression, uh, oh God, Jesus is, uh, Lord God, made right before him. Uh, have a little talk with him. Uh, let him know, Lord God, uh, I'm sorry for the things that I've done. Uh, I'm sorry, God, for walking in sin. Uh, I'm sorry, God, that I, Lord God, uh, I was only hearing, but I was not doing. Uh, Lord Father, I want the anointed, uh, oh God, the anointing to be on my life. I don't want to jeopardize what you have given me. I don't want to walk away because I'm addicted to my flesh. No, Lord God, I want the power of God to flow in me. In the name of Jesus, I want to stand. I want to live right. I want to last. That when the storms of life comes raging, my house is built on the rock. This rock is Jesus. He's our solid rock. He's unmovable. Oh God, always abounding. Lord Father, we have a solid rock. Oh God, we don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. As long as we are built on him huh? Lord God on him huh? again on him huh? there are many religions out there huh? the key thing is that you got to be built on Jesus uh, upon this rock I stand uh, all of the ground it's sinking sand huh? Lord God I want to encourage you today who is listening huh? oh God huh? it's time to build your rock huh? it's time to build your house huh? on a sure foundation huh? oh God that when the storms of life come huh? you can say it is well huh? it is well with my soul huh? it is well huh? Lord God hallelujah huh? I've seen huh? oh God the raging of the storm but in spite of it huh? it is well it is well uh, can you say it as well wherever you are uh, come on just worship him I want you to worship him uh, on this holy day worship him uh, worship him for his mighty works uh, worship him because of what he has done uh, worship him because of where he brought you from uh, we were all bound by sin uh, but Jesus came uh, that you and I may have life uh, and have it more abundantly You ain't start living until you have Jesus. He shelters you. He covers us. He gives us strength to keep on going. We are living in trying times. But as believers, we can make it through Jesus. Come on, somebody, just thank him. Thank him for the blood. Thank him for dying for you on Calvary. Thank him. Come on, thank him. Thank him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank him. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Are you built to last? Do you have all that is needed to make it? The most important thing is having the Spirit of God. So if you're here right now, you don't have the Spirit of God. 
I want you to pray and ask God to give you his spirit. Ask God to forgive you for your sins. Ask God even now. Wherever you are, God has the power to heal you. He has the power to save you. He has the power to redeem you. He has the power to give you the ability to make real.